Hello and welcome back to Taco Movie Talks. Today I'm here to share with you 15 more must-watch movies for any movie fan. And starting off the list right, we have Pulp Fiction, which is considered to be one of the most iconic films of my memory, at least, growing up with scenes and characters and moments that were just completely baked into the iconography of America, basically from the mid-90s moving forward, and it lives up to its lofty accolades. I think when a movie's propped up the way that Pulp Fiction had been, it's easy to kind of write it off as being overhyped, but I promise you, after watching it, you will agree that it does live up to the hype. It's also probably Quentin Tarantino's absolute best and a litmus test for trying him out. And he is, whether you like it or not, most likely one of the best directors of all time. Uh, there's a lot of competition, but as far as recent and active ones, I'm, you know, it, him and Scorsese are damn near at the top of my list. The next film is Autumn Sonata. This is, an, this is a great entry point for Igmar Bergman. And he is an absolutely dazzling director. It is one of the best familial dramas ever put to film. And is something that you will find to be kind of a specialty of Bergman. So again, it's a great litmus test for him. The dynamics between the characters are so fleshed out and they feel intensely real. Definitely a drama to check out and a film to potentially start with if you haven't seen Bergman because he's one of the greats uh, of all time as well. Next we have Rashomon. Akira Kurosawa completely reconstructs how narratives can influence the audience's understanding of film with this one. It was likely something done in film before, but probably one of the best first examples of what was done in this film. Again, I don't want to give it away because you can know it going in, but kind of finding it out as you go along might be the most interesting avenue to explore it. Not only is it important from a historical standpoint, but it's an un it's an unbelievably engaging film without question. Uh, worth seeing if you remove the historical context, but with that in mind, it makes it all the more worth watching. Definitely check it out. And again, if you haven't seen Kurosawa, Rashomon is a great place to start that will likely make you want to just dive deep into his filmography. Next, we have Fight Club. I know we're not supposed to talk about it, but it falls in line with Rashomon to an extent that there is kind of a twist here that is completely game-changing. The plot itself is completely, you know, engaging. And Brad Pitt as Tyler Durden, uh, great casting and one of the most interesting characters uh, ever put to film. It, this was actually a film I kind of struggled between Persona and this one. And if you've seen either one, you'll kind of reason you'll you'll be able to reason out why it was actually kind of a, a, a choice because they they kind of represent similar things as far as you know the reveal and and how or what the film is kind of trying to represent. Um, one of the most effective reveals of all time, uh, and and once you see the end. Uh, knowing it and watching it again, it's completely recontextualizes what you're seeing. Uh, one of the best examples of that in film. Definitely must watch. If you haven't seen it, you gotta see it. Next, we have Naked. Uh, 
this is one of the best black comedies of all time. I started watching Mike Lee with Naked and Secrets and Lies. And while Secrets and Lies is definitely great, Naked is probably his masterpiece. And as I said, it is like a pitch black comedy. Uh, very deeply nihilistic in one of the best performances of all time from David Thewlis, uh, who is absolutely phenomenal. And and while we're here, I just want to say thank you for joining. Comment your thoughts on the movies I uh, have recommended so far, what you thought of them, any you would recommend, as well as like the video and subscribe because it really helps the channel. And there are tons of videos that I've made that I think you will really, really enjoy. So I appreciate your support. Next, we have Solaris. Uh, Tarkovsky is one of the greats of all time. I know I've been saying this a lot, but you know, film is just so expansive and there's more than one way to skin a cat. And a lot of the directors mentioned so far have dominated in different ways and have super unique styles and that doesn't apply to anyone better than Andre Tarkovsky because he really does have a style all of his own and he takes this science fiction picture and explores deep themes and absolutely spins your head like a top with the prose of the movie Solaris. Um, one of the most interesting sci-fi premises of all time and definitely should watch, if you're a sci-fi fan, uh, Solaris, the original I can speak to, is an absolute must-watch. Next, we have There Will Be Blood by Paul Thomas Anderson, and Anderson is a director that is one of the best when it comes to character study type of films, and this is a perfect example of that with Daniel Day-Lewis putting on one of the best performances of all time. Uh, it's just a wonderfully told character study, one that is deeply engaging that I don't think you will be able to look away from, despite there being some uh, really hard-to-stomach moments, not even like gory, not even brutally violent, uh, just kind of painful scenes because of the, the deep emotion and uh, just feeling for the characters involved. Up next, we got No Country for Old Men. Unbelievably, the second film from 2007, uh, There Will Be Blood also in 2007, so just a great year for movies. But this includes one of the best pure villains of all time and is a damn great neo-Western, which changes much of the premises which pertain to Westerns prior to this film. And I think we, we kind of saw the dynamic of Westerns change uh, from when it was one of the more predominant genres that were being filmed and shown to you know the 21st century. And a lot of directors, including the Coen brothers, felt like there needed to be a spin, and this movie does just that. And again, uh, Javier Bardem is just one of the best villains of all time and should be watched purely for that but this is a great story as well and one you definitely need to check out the next film we have is one flew over the cuckoo's nest it's one of jack nicholson's best performances a great battle between good and evil with nicholson facing the vile nurse ratchet so two just tremendous characters and a, a, a great story that is told very very well and one you should definitely check out next we have interstellar this was one of the greatest cinematic experiences of the 21st century as far as i'm concerned it it, it felt like and i want to temper the expectations because i don't know what it was like to see 2001 a space odyssey in theaters when that came out and I hope to one day see it in theaters, period. But I can only assume that this was the closest that any director has came to kind of recapturing the magic that must have been present when people went to see 2001. And for that very reason, 
I think you should see it on the best setup you possibly can. So, you know, if, if you have a big, a big TV at home, watch it, turn the lights off, turn that sound all the way up and enjoy. Or if not, if you have friends, make a viewing experience out of it. Um, I don't know if they really show this particular film in theaters anymore, but if you have a, an opportunity to see it in theaters, I would say it's very well worth it because it, it is really one of those films that just captures what cinema is, is really all about as far as I'm concerned. Next we have Doubt. Um, two of the best at their craft just bouncing off each other and creating some wonderful scenes. Uh, the performances in this film are just absolutely tremendous. And to see two really, really great performances in one movie sometimes is just crazy. Uh, and this is definitely one of those films that pulls that off. And it's a very relevant story even still, but definitely at the time it was very relevant. But we're still seeing uh, the, the kind of the ripple effect uh, of what this film is about. And for that reason makes it worth seeing, but when there are great performances, it, it makes it definitely one that you'll want to watch. Next we have the deer hunter, one of the most intense anti-war films of all time. While many war films have tried to capture the ills of people coming home from war, None have really captured it more faithfully and terrifyingly than The Deer Hunter. Um, I'm just trying to think. I, I, I haven't seen all of the war films for, for sure. But this feels like it really captures the effect on the psyche of men coming home uh, pretty faithfully. And man, it's a, it's a damn good film on top of that. So the deer hunter is an absolute must watch. Next we have 12 angry men. This is a masterclass in how to write a snappy and efficient script that will make audiences never want to blink. Uh, just really, really good writing and does it with minimal, um, really anything else besides having good actors. You know, it, it has good talent. It's a one set shoot and it makes a masterpiece. So, you know, that's a, that's a huge challenge that I think many directors would struggle with, but it was definitely not a struggle with 12 angry men going to down to the last two. We have Michelle Hanukkah's funny games, which simultaneously unveils a cutting commentary eviscerating the current state of media while producing one of the most horrific films of all times. This is uh, a, a horrifying premise for sure and being able to tie in this very intelligent kind of commentary on the violence of media, it, it just it, it makes kind of an enigmatic film for sure. I think it's definitely one that needs to be seen because there's no horror film quite like this and it kind of creates and breaks the mold at the very same time. Uh, meaning you really can't do a film like this without it feeling like a direct ripoff of Funny Games. So I definitely implore you to watch that. And last but not least, we have The Devils by Ken Russell. Uh, controversy has surrounded Ken Russell's The Devils for over 50 years, making it one of the forbidden fruits of the film community that is actually masterfully done and well worth watching besides its infamy. Um, you, you probably haven't heard of The Devils or you probably have a, a sense of like, oh geez, like this must be a, a crazy freaking film because everything is like you know, this was banned, this was that, and whatever. Um, it's one of the most well-done films of its kind, and just really kind of trying to show the hypocrisy and the cracks in the armor of the Catholic religion, uh, going all the way back to the, the you know, possessions of Lodon. 
uh, which is kind of a, a little known historical kind of uh, story, I guess, that I vaguely knew about, but the telling of it in The Devils makes it super, super interesting. It's a really, really interesting historical story, but the context that The Devils puts upon it is just makes it so worth watching. I, I hope you enjoyed uh, this list. I hope you check them out. If you've seen them, let me know your thoughts. And then if this inspires you to watch them, let me know what you thought about it after viewing because I'm really interested and I want to keep kind of doing videos like this and that uh, commentary can help me kind of guide the list to try to include things that need to be included. So, you know, also put your recommendations down below. I appreciate you all and I will catch you on the flippity floop. Bye, y'all.